What is up comic book fans? It is another episode of Pull This for the week of October 17th, 2018. I'm your host Connor Christensen. We're going to run down the top five books of the week coming out today, Wednesday, October 17th, 2018. I know I already said that, but we're going to reiterate it. Uh, a lot of great books coming out this week. Might be a little bit of a lighter week, you know, not as many released this week, but still five really, really good ones that we're going to talk about uh, right now. All right, at number five this week, we've got Black Hammer, Age of Doom, number six, written by Jeff Lemire and drawn by Rich Tommaso. You know what? I'm low with y'all. Uh, I don't know the first goddamn thing about Black Hammer. I All I know is this is a sequel, maybe? I don't know. I, I don't even know if it's a sequel or a prequel series. I had to Google to figure it out that, yes, it is, in fact, a sequel series to Black Hammer. That's, that's literally it. That's all I know about this book. But... I constantly see people on Twitter talking about how good it is. I hear people at the comic shop telling me how good it is. So I feel like it's about damn time we give them a shout out. So here they are, number five this week. Now, 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 now. I know what you're probably thinking. What the fuck is this guy doing? He's recommending a book to us that he's never even read? Like, wh why? That makes zero sense. Well, I'll tell you why. There's three main reasons. One, Jeff Lemire is writing it. That's enough of a reason for me. Two, Rich Tommaso is drawing it of Dry County fame, and that book was awesome. Number three, it's the sequel to an Eisner Award winning comic that has also won an Eisner Award, so it's probably pretty good. Like I said before, it's about time we give Dark Horse, Lemire, and Tommaso the credit they're due, so go ahead, pick up this book. I know I'm going to, and you know, since I don't know anything about the series, I'm probably going to pick up issues one through five as well. Pick them up, pick up all of them, I don't know, give it a shot. Everyone tells me it's good. Should be. It's got a great team behind it. It's probably gonna be great. Just check it out. All right, and at number four this week, we've got Justice League number 10, written by Scott Snyder and drawn by Francis Manapool. All right, I'm gonna level with you guys again. I'm actually not the biggest fan of this Justice League series. Don't get me wrong, I don't dislike it per se. It just doesn't really do it for me, which is weird, because like, I've really enjoyed the art. I love Scott Snyder's writing, and I love most of what he writes. But it's just, I don't know, this just hasn't clicked for me. I think it's just, I'm, I'm just not into teen books, really. Like, it's just, that's just it. But I will say this, now, now is the time to get back aboard the Justice League hype train. That's right, there's no better time than now to pick up the Justice League once again as Justice League number 10 kicks off the Drowned Earth mega crossover event between Justice League and Aquaman. This is a prelude to the upcoming event where the Justice League and Aquaman team up to fight the new villain, The Flood, get it, like water, who has an unquenchable, get it, water puns, who has an unquenchable thirst for vengeance against the god Poseidon and Atlantis and really just all of Earth. It's another, like, end-all, be-all, save-the-earth story, but it sounds pretty badass, and, uh, yeah, it's about damn time we get an Aquaman-centric event. I'll say it. We need it. We need it right now. We need an Aquaman event. I'm, I'm stoked for this. I'm, like, I sound sarcastic. I'm not. I'm, I'm actually pretty excited. This is an Aquaman event coming out right before an Aquaman movie. Is this a coincidence? Or is this some sort of marketing ploy to get more people to go see the movie? I don't know, probably, probably just a coincidence, people. I mean, seriously, think about it. You think DC's gonna waste time and money and resources to do an Aquaman event in the comic books to get more comic book readers to go to a comic book movie? No, it's stupid. We're comic book readers. We're already gonna go see Aquaman. Even though it actually looks pretty sweet, let's be honest, it looks better than almost every other DC coming out so far. But then again, I remember seeing the Suicide Squad trailer and being like, oh, that looks fucking badass. And then being pissed off because it's the worst movie ever made. And I will argue that to the death because it's fucking trash. It's a horrible movie. Anyway, Justice League number 10 is going to be rad. It's a kick-ass series drawn by a kick-ass creator at DC. Arguably TC's best writer, Scott Snyder, is helming it. So I'm really excited. I'm definitely going to be picking it up and I'm back aboard the Justice League train. Coming in at number 3 this week, we've got Justice League Dark number 4. Written by James the IV and drawn by Alvaro Martinez and Raul Fernandez. Okay, so the theme of this episode is honesty. So I'm gonna level with you guys for a third time. Um, I might have been wrong earlier when I said I don't really like teen books uh, because like, I really like Justice League Dark, like a lot. Like it's one of my favorite ongoing titles from the two big publishers right now. So 
So yeah, I guess I do like team books. Seriously though, out of the three Justice League titles going on right now, this is by far and away my favorite, which is super surprising to me because it was the one I was least excited about following the events of No Justice. Like, I was like, oh, Justice League Dark, whatever. It's a continuation of the old Justice League Dark. I'm sure it's just cashing in on that nostalgia of everybody wanting that series back. I was wrong, the series kicks ass. Look, this doesn't just claim to be a horror-themed Justice League title for the sake of Halloween being close. This is a genuinely creepy and unsettling book. I mean, like, if you've read the first three issues, the Upside Down Man is like the fucking shit of nightmares. Guy's creepy as shit. He's one of the creepiest villains in comics. I don't like it. He's barefoot, too. That, that's the weirdest part of me. Why is he barefoot? He's coming from some, like, extra hell dimension. Like, you'd think he'd at least have, like, proper footwear on, but he don't give a fuck. Fuck feet and fuck shoes, says the Upside Down Man. I don't... It's fucking scary. Like Drowned Earth, this is another Justice League crossover with an ongoing title. This is actually part three of The Witching Hour, which crosses over with the ongoing Wonder Woman series, which is bringing a little bit of horror to the Wonder Woman book right now. Justice League Dark and the overall Witching Hour story are the perfect stories for the DC fan who wants a little bit of scary in their Justice League and Wonder Woman stories as Halloween comes up. Seriously, Justice League Dark kicks ass. You should pick it up. It's one of the best, one of the best DC books out right now. I love it. Love it. And at number two this week, we've got Daredevil number 609, written by Charles Soule and drawn by Phil Noto. You know, this, this breaks my heart to say it, but it's like every Charles Soule series that I love at Marvel is ending. It's like he's, he's personally looking at my Twitter feed and he's gone. Uh, oh, he likes that book, huh? <laughs> oh, oh, Poe Dameron fan, yeah? Oh, look at this, he likes Daredevil. What if I just, uh, what if I just ended all these series at once? That's basically what Charles Sewell's doing, and I, I, I'm trying not to take it personally, but I almost feel like he's doing this on purpose. Daredevil number 609 kicks off Charles Sewell's final story arc with the character that he has titled so ominously, Death of Daredevil. Not only does it wrap up Sewell's run on the character, but it also wraps up the crazy Mayor Fist storyline that has been going on for feels like almost a year now, maybe. Maybe, maybe dates, yeah, no, it's about a year now. It's a long story. Charles Sewell joked in his newsletter that he wants to follow the Daredevil writer tradition of leaving the character's life in such disarray that it becomes an absolute pain in the ass for the next writer to try to pull it all back together. To quote Charles Sewell himself, he said, I want to do the biggest craziest Daredevil ending ever. So I decided to kill Matt Murdock. Sewell's run on Daredevil has already been pretty crazy. I mean, Wilson Fisk is the fucking mayor of New York and has been for a long time. So if he's promising it's gonna, promising it's gonna get even crazier, it's gonna get more insane, it's gonna leave things even, even trickier for the next writer. I mean, shit, I'm sold, I'm excited. I can't wait to see what he does. Hope he doesn't actually kill Matt Murdock. That would suck. I really like Daredevil. Hope it's not the end of the series. I'm assuming, and I'm gonna say, ah, mid-November, we're gonna get an announcement of Daredevil number one, probably written by, I don't know, I feel like Donny Cates has too much going on right now. Matt Rosenberg, you know? I don't know, maybe Ed Brisson. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna go with that guess. Ed Brisson's gonna be right in Daredevil. That's my guess. So Daredevil number one. Who knows? Look for the announcement in November. I'm calling it mid-November. We're gonna find out about Daredevil number one. Either way, I'm very sad. It's the beginning of the end for Charles Sewell's run. It's been a fantastic run. I can't wait to see how he closes it out. And our number one choice of the week is Gideon Falls number seven, written by Jeff Lemire and drawn by Andrea Sorrentino. My final time leveling with everybody. You know, we're in the trust tree right now, the trust circle, the trust triangle, if you will. Um, if you're not reading Gideon Falls right now, I fucking hate you. Okay, that's a little harsh. I don't hate you. But seriously, what are you doing? It's, it, do you just not like good things? Are you, do you just purposely avoid great things? That way you, you, you don't have a, a, a reference point for bad things? I don't understand. I really don't. Like, please enlighten me. If you're not reading Gideon Falls... Why aren't you? I need reasonings because it's incredible. It's one of the best comic books on the market right now. Lemire and Sorrentino's creator-owned horror story has been a non-stop thrill ride since the very first issue. It kicks ass and it's not just comic book readers who are noticing, it has already been picked up to be a live action television series. 
Number seven is actually a really, really good jumping on point too for new readers because it's right after the conclusion of the first arc and it actually dives into the backstory of the mysterious and shrouded, clouded, weird main character, Norton, to kind of figure out like how he got to be who he is. And believe me, he's a weird guy. He's, he's creepy. He's not creepy. That's a little harsh, but he's weird. He's out there. He's odd. There we go. He's an odd fella. Issue number seven also prompts us to shed a little bit more light on the black barn that has been haunting the main characters throughout the series. So you got that going for you too. Really though, the series has been absolutely mind-bending, not only in its narrative scope and direction, but in the absolutely insane and creative paneling and illustrations from artist Andrea Sorrentino. I mean, it is some of the most unique and just absolutely astonishing art out there right now and it's got an incredibly engaging creepy and and just wonderful mystery horror story behind it you have no excuse not to read this book it's just actually it's just, it's just incredible it's just it's the best it's guarantee of the week it's all right and that wraps things up for poll this for the week of october 17th 2018 let us know what you thought of our picks this week in the comments below don't forget to rate subscribe share on twitter share on facebook email it to your grandma download it onto a flash drive attach the flash drive to a carrier pigeon and let that pigeon go out into the sky so somebody finds the flash drive and goes what's on this and they eventually wipe it clean and i don't know upload whatever they're gonna upload on it either way spread the word i'd really appreciate it i'll see you guys next week